we're going to be making this avatar into a latex goo drippy avatar creature. This is the result that we're going to be creating here on this tutorial. And we're going to be using one of the existing presets to do that. So, since we're going to be using a preset, we first of all need to find it. So, you can find all the presets in the value factory, go to showcase scene right here. As you can see, there's a bunch of presets right here. All of them are located in this materials folder right here. And we're going to be using this latex goo preset right here. So we can find the material here by double clicking. So we next select the body here and selecting the material over here. This will ping the material. Now we're going to want to duplicate this material. These presets are here just to be presets and for you to kind of like copy them and then work off of those copies. You shouldn't be editing these directly. If you do edit these and then later on decide to update your goo shader, then you will lose all your progress because that new package that you're going to be importing is going to overwrite all the settings for these materials. So we're going to make a copy of the latex goo material here by clicking on it and then pressing Control D on our keyboards. And as you can see, that is made a copy right here. Now I'm going to be making a new folder in my assets right here. So I just right click the assets at the top, create folder, and I'm going to name this goo materials. This is just so we're a little bit more organized and I can then Take the copy and drag it over here. Make sure you're dragging the copy, not the original. Now I'm going to go back into my normal scene. We're going to apply this material now onto our avatar. So I'm going to first of all rename this into body. So I'm going to select the material, press F2, and then rename it into body. Now drag this onto the body of our avatar. As you can see, it's already doing gooey stuff. Now you'll notice that there are some seams over here, some weird holes in the avatar, which is not what we want at all. So what's going on here? Well, that's a result of the material using a bake required feature, the goo right here, while the mesh itself that we're applying this onto is not baked. So how do we fix that? Well, we need to bake the mesh. So I'm going to double click on the mesh right here to select the body. The body object right here is going to contain the skin mesh renderer of our avatar. I'm going to right click on the skin mesh renderer, go to VF Goo 2 and bake mesh. As you can see, that has now fixed the issue. Now, this bake is going to be something that you're going to need to do on every mesh that's going to be using a material which uses a bake required feature. You might run into an issue with your bake avatar. So right now, everything looks fine with the bake, but as soon as we turn on this breast blend shape, which what it does is it hides the chest part of the uh, avatar here and shows a hidden chest area that was inside the avatar all the time. And as you can see now, there's holes and discontinuities in the avatar right here. And that is not something that we want. How do we work around this in the bake? Well, the baking process will actually take into account the currently active blend shapes on the mesh. So for example, if we were to go ahead and bake the mesh as it is right now with the breast blend shape to 100, as you can see, the problem is fixed. However, if we revert the breast blend shape, now the problem remains here. So if you're running into this issue where toggling a blend shape kind of screws up the goo on the avatar, you're going to want to bake the mesh with that blend shape set to 100 and pretty much keep that blend shape set to 100 all the time. There's not really a good workaround for this. And unfortunately, you're just going to have to choose whether or not you want a blend shape like this to be on or off. So please keep that in mind. Now we can start editing the material itself. There's a lot of options here for you to change and tweak and stuff. And if you're ever confused about what something does, Refer to the documentation by clicking one of these question marks right here, and it'll tell you exactly what this property and what this texture and etc. what it all does. On top of that, we have a whole manual by clicking this button right here. You'll find a lot of answers and a lot of troubleshooting steps over here, as well as various tutorials that you can follow. If everything else fails, please join our Discord server, verify your purchase, and make a thread on our questions forum. Okay, next up, I'm going to want to take this material here and apply it to the rest of the uh, things on the avatar because I want the wings to be gooey as well. I want the hair to be gooey, etc., and as well as the fluff. So I'm just going to select the material, Control D to duplicate it, and let's name this fluff because I want to do the fluff first. Drag this onto the fluff. As you can see, it's already gooey. I'm going to do the same thing with the uh, wings now. Wings. It's on there as well now. And let's do that for the hair as well. There we go. 
Now, as we can see, the hair is already having a little bit of trouble here because it's not baked. It's, another, it's a separate mesh. It needs to be baked. Right? The wings as well, they are not looking correct at all. Goo is completely wrong on them, so we need to bake the mesh as well. So, so I'm going to bake the, uh, the wings now. This right here now is telling us that the wing mesh has data in the UV2 channel. The Goo Shader Baker, what it does is it'll put some special data into the UV2 channel of the mesh, and the result of that, whatever is in the UV2 channel already will be overwritten. I know that I don't store any specific kind of important data in the UV2 channel of these wings, so I'm perfectly fine with that happening. If you do store something important in the UV2 channel, know that your original mesh will not be overwritten during the bake process. We make a copy of the mesh and then write some new data in that copy of the mesh, right? But if you do need to access the UV2 channel, you're going to want to move that to another UV2 channel if you want to use that in the goose shader, of course. So I'm going to proceed with baking. And as you can see, that it seems to have fixed a lot of the issues. Now the wings are, are gooey and nice. I'm going to do the same thing on the hair. It's like the actual hair object. So on the hair, the, it's not a body, it's a hair object. So bake mesh. And as you can see, there's even with the bake mesh, there's still some problems here. There's still holes here. And that happens when we have discontinuous normals. You might say this on some of your avatars as well, not just that. And you could try to mitigate this by baking it using smooth normals. And there we go. Now keep in mind that using a smooth normal bake will actually completely recalculate the normals of your mesh and throw out any custom normal data. There's also the smooth normals method uh, using the Unity FBX importer. That's another method you can try out. If all else fails, I just recommend disabling the goo. You'll still have the preset working, but it won't be deforming and you won't have any weird holes in your mesh. So next up, I don't like how the face is all gooey and drippy. I would like the face to be clean so my expressions will be visible. We can do that by creating a mask. Down here, tripping and deformation have these things called mask channels. Mask channels are a global masking system that let you mask out a lot of the things on the goose shader with various masks that you can customize. If you would like to learn more about mask channels and how to use them and what they can do, please watch the mask channel uh, tutorial available in the description. We're going to be using a capsule mask to mask out the head here. You can also use a texture mask, and I re recommend using a texture mask in case you want to do any kind of complicated masking. But for the texture mask, you have to somehow paint it in Substance, Blender, or, or some kind of painting program for you to actually be able to use those. We also have a tutorial on that in the description. So, we're going to be setting up a capsule mask on the body. So, let's enable capsule mask. And also, the capsules also require a bake, so make sure your meshes are baked. So, I'm going to press the Edit Capsule. Our mesh is going to go completely black. I'm going to select the body of the mesh. And there's going to be a little thing here at the bottom that we can move around. That's the capsule that we're going to be using to mask. The black parts now correspond to the parts where the mask will be hiding things, and the white parts correspond to where the mask will be showing things. So, now, I'm going to move up to Deformation and Dripping, find the mask channel, and assign the capsule mask that we just enabled to both of these. And now, if I move the capsule around, we'll see that the, where the capsule is, the dripping and the deformation will occur. Okay, great. But what if we want to just isolate the head from dripping and deforming? Well, we can click this invert button on the capsule. That'll invert the whole selection. And now, where the capsule is, there's no dripping and there is no deforming. Awesome. Now, notice how there is a fall off. It's not a completely Boolean sort of on and off. There's a fall off. There's a gray edge. We don't want that here. We want a strong fall off. We, we, we want to make sure that the face is, is not half dripping and half not dripping. So how do we do that? We take the strength of the pre-inversion here and move that all the way up. Just the taste pretty much. I'm going to set that to eight. I like that. So now as you can see, there's uh, a very, not a hard edge, but there's a, the, the edge is a lot harder now, and this is exactly what we want. So, I'm now going to position this capsule on the head, so I'm going to control click to rotate and snap as I'm rotating, and just move this up so that pretty much the head is covered. Also, I think that's, I think that's good. Yeah, we're going to keep that. I'm also going to take this and, oh, 
I'm going to take the mask here and I'm going to rename it to head no drip no default. So we kind of know what this mask does. And now I notice that the hair and the fluff here are kind of dripping through the face and I don't quite like how that looks. So I'm going to do so I'm going to right click on the on the mask here, copy and then select the fluff and the hair. Right click on the capsule there and paste that there. And then as I have the fluff and hair selected, I'm going to set the mask channel of the deformation to that mask and the dripping to that mask. And as you can see, the hair and the fluff are no longer dripping there. Now, I might actually want to kind of adjust the capsule here on the, here on the hair, because I do want a little bit of that on the hair, but not at the very... Yeah, something like that. I'm going to adjust the fall off here as well. Yeah, something a little bit smoother. Yes, I like that. I'm going to keep that. Feel free to mess around with these settings and tweak them to your liking. Now, I would also like to enable LTCGI support for the avatar. That's available in the lighting tab right here as a little drop down. I'm going to select all of my materials here and just check LTCGI support. And now, when we upload this avatar and go into LTCGI world, we'll have all the LTCGI reflections that we'd like. Of course, you have to have LTCGI installed in your project and you can get it on this link on screen right here. Now, at this point, this avatar is ready to upload and ready to be used. However, I want to add touch reactivity to it as well. Touch reactivity is something that allows the avatar to react to things that are being touched and to things around the environment to bulge out or bulge in. Now, touch reactivity is a little bit nuanced in the setup, and I would highly recommend watching the touch reactivity setup video because it'll cover a lot of the various edge cases that you might run into with your avatar that I might not cover here. So, let's start setting this up. I want pretty much every part of the avatar to be touch reactive, so I'm just going to set that to enabled. And as you can see, there's already some th weird things happening with, with the, uh, the eyes. We're going to be tweaking that in just a little bit. As you can see, the avatar is now touch reactive. It's great. If the avatar isn't touch reactive for you, there's likely some project configuration settings that are misconfigured. In that case, please watch the uh, setup video that we have linked below, or look through these touch reactivity intersection effects aren't working properly in the editor troubleshooting steps. Now, we have a problem here on the head. What's happening here is that the goo body is reacting to the eyes. It's pretty much assuming that there's something touching it there, and it's reacting it. Same with the glasses. The glasses are just kind of like there, and so kind of they're reacting, All right? What I'm going to do here, the easy solution here, is to actually just mask this out using the mask we made earlier. So I'm going to select the fluff hair and that, and I'm just going to say mask this with the capsule mask, and voila, we no longer have that issue. Now, you might have a whole set of clothes on your avatar or maybe something more complicated. In that case, you're going to want to make the materials on that piece that's interacting with your avatar be set up so that it doesn't interact with your avatar. That's something you're going to want to do on that material itself. We're not going to cover that here, but again, please watch the Touch Reactivity Setup video. It's going to cover all of those cases. There are a couple of problems with this. First off, at least in my instance, glasses here kind of seem to hide the hair and then the other thing is that this is not present here in the editor but in game it's going to be this blush blend chip that's set to 100 sometimes and that's going to kind of like make the face a little bit see-through so how do we fix this well first off let's start with the blush uh let's find the blush material here down here click on it take a look at it as we can see, the render key of this is set to 2,400, whereas the goo material render queue is set to 3,000. On top of that, the rendering in the blush is going to write into the Z buffer. And so is the goo shader. It's also going to test for the Z buffer. So what's going to happen here is that the blush is going to render first. It's going to render into the Z buffer, and then it's going to render into the Z buffer in front of the face. And the goose shader is going to render because it has a render queue that's higher than the blush. And then the goose shader is going to see, oh, there's something already in front of me. The blush is already in front of me here. 
So I'm not going to render anything there. So how do we fix this? Well, we can take the blush and set it to render a little bit after the goo. So let's say 3005. Voila. Problem solved. Now, how about these glasses? Well, let's find the glasses. They're going to be on the glass itself. Going to be this material right here. This is the hypno shader, so we're going to unlock that first. And as you can see, the render queue here is the same as the goo, right? So what happens here is that when two things are on the same render queue, the hair is also on render queue 3000. When two things are on the same render queue, it's undefined which things get drawn first. And as you can see, this is also rendering into the Z buffer, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to say, hey, the glasses should render a little later. So let's say that 310. And voila, again, problem fixed. There's something similar going on with the rim there as well. We can do simi something similar there. So this will be on the glasses. Glass frame. Go in here. Set this to 30005. And there you go. So you might need to tweak the render queue of things as well, because with touch reactivity on, we're going to be rendering into the 3000 render queue, and, and things over there kind of get a little bit weird and funky. So you're going to need to tweak that a little bit to make sure that your things are correct. And yeah, the last thing to do here with touch reactivity is to put the directional light on this. So we're going to go into the prefabs folder and the go to folder, find the directional light for touch reactivity, and drag that onto the root object of our avatar. And that's it. This directional light is required in order for touch reactivity to work. If you don't have this directional light on your avatar, but you have touch reactivity turned on, things will not look right at all. So please make sure you have this directional light turned on on your avatar. That's about it. You can upload this avatar now and use it in game. Have fun.